Okay, so in front of us we have a GTX 1080 Ti. This card is a half working card, so instead of starting with a resistance and a voltage measurement, we're going to first see what, what um, problems this card has in uh, Windows, and then we'll discuss what it means. Okay, so as you can see, the 1080 Ti is on the test bench. If we look at Windows, you'll notice that in Device Manager, um, the 1080 Ti suffers from, uh, well, it, has, it throws Code 43. Code 43 is a very, very famous error, so let's go ahead and disassemble the card and discuss what Code 43 means exactly. Okay, so as you saw, this card suffers from the infamous Code 43. So Code 43 is, like I said, rather infamous. A lot of people are aware of the error, but for some reason they don't seem to understand what this means. So first things first, if you have a, code, if you have a card with Code 43, you want to be trying a few uh, software solutions. So firstly, you want to be um, reinstalling your drivers using an uninstall tool like uh, DDU, and then you want to be flashing your BIOS. This, this is typically the only two software solutions you have to Code 43. Assuming, of course, Soft, uh, faulty software isn't causing your card to throw code 43. Code 43 generally denotes an error relating to either the BIOS or the memory. Now, I don't mean to suggest that you can, say, replace the BIOS chip and it, it, it'll work, or that you can replace the memory module and that your card will work. It's not that simple. Like, for example, um, actually, if you don't know, a uh, faulty GPU can always call, cause code 43 on any platform. Anyways, so... Like I said, Code 43 denotes an error relating to either the BIOS or the memory, not necessarily caused by the BIOS and the memory. So for the BIOS, you have to consider the resistors connected to it. And for the memory, again, there are resistors and capacitors around these memory modules. And you also have to consider the actual PCB data lines between the uh, GPU and the memory itself. So assuming you have a card with Code 43 and, that you've, and you've determined it's a hardware level fault, the first, thing, the first two things you want to do is check for a short or not short, but rather you want to check the resistances on the memory phase. So for a 1080 Ti, I expect to see about 75 ohms. 74, 75, okay. Yep, so that's uh, perfectly normal for this for a reference 1080 Ti. And then you want to be checking the resistance on the 1.8 volt rail. So again, for a reference 1080 Ti, or near reference 1080 Ti, this is about 850 ohms. You sometimes see uh, 750 on some Asus cards and 650 on some PNY and Pallet cards. So in this case, we have a rather absurd 1.5 kilo ohms. I've seen this exactly once, so I think I already know what's going on. But anyways, since Code 43 relates, you know, like I said earlier, relates to the uh, BIOS or the memory, and by the way, if you don't know, 1.8 volts powers the BIOS as well as some other, um, you know, it, it's used for a lot of like configuration resistors and some other like data lines. It, it's it, it's used for a lot of things, but basically it also powers the BIOS. So the fact that we have 1.5 kilo ohms on 1.8 volts instead of 850 ohms tells me that we have a BIOS related problem. So We'll have to go solve this first. So once we solve this, if we still have code 43, I'm going to go ahead and assume that it's uh, the memory itself, as this is rather common on Pascal cards, while on, let's say, RX 400 and 500 series cards, and old enough cards that, you know, on cards that are GTX 900 series and older, you generally see um, BIOS modifications sometimes being the culprit. Anyways, so anyways, like I was saying, let's go ahead and uh, try to lower the resistance back to 850 ohms, and we'll see if the card's any more functional. Okay, so I found the uh, faulty component. I apologize for the view, by the way. My uh, workspace isn't really set up for this stuff. So the faulty component is actually a resistor over, let's see, here. It's actually this one right here. So if you don't know, this is the back of the GPU. This is the uh, mounting holes, the, os the crystal oscillators on the left of the uh, black probe. So anyways, let's just go ahead and measure resistance. This should be about 100,000 ohms. As you can see, we have a open line. Now, if I go over to this resistor here, 101,000 ohms, but like I said, this resistor, open line. Okay, so this, my understanding is that this resistor is supposed to be about 100,000 ohms. I could be wrong, but anyways, let's go ahead and replace it with a uh, resistor found on a donor card, and we'll see if the card is any more functional. Okay, so just a quick update. So I've noticed that the resistance on 1.8 volts is still quite high. I think um, almost 1.5 kilo ohms. I've noticed that uh, this resistor and a resistor that used to be over here that's now gone, they're um, not 33 ohms like they're supposed to be. So I have to replace these two as well, which we'll do in a moment, and then we'll check if resistance on 1.8 volts is a 50.
Okay, so as you saw, I replaced uh, that one resistor. I should note that I haven't just replaced that. I've also replaced, um, well, I've replaced four resistors in total. So I replaced, uh, hold on, these two here, this one and this one, they're both 33 ohms each. I've replaced this one here, by the way, 100,000 ohms. And finally, I had to replace, um, let me see, this one. I think this is, yeah, this is one kilo ohm. Okay, so let's put the card back on the bench. And if we go over to resistance mode, you'll notice that we have a rather nice 850 ohms on the 1.8 volt rail. So let's go ahead and uh, put the card back together and check the check whether we still have code 43 in device manager. Okay, so as you can see, the uh, card's running game at the moment. So if we go over to uh, device manager, you'll notice that we no longer have code 43. So yes, it turns out in this case, code 43 was caused by those uh, dead resistors connected to the BIOS chip. So. As for um, if GPU-Z, you notice that the, we have a, well, the card's running at X16 2.0, which is the maxis computer supports, so that's good. And if we go to the sensors tab, we actually have another problem. So the clocks are good, the temperatures are fine, but our power consumption is at a blistering um, 0%. And by extension, the voltage of the V-Core is halted at a 0.8 volts, so this card is actually performance limited. So we have to fix this in order to get the full performance out of the card. And, um, well, let's go ahead and... Uh, disassemble the card and discuss what this means exactly. Okay, so as you saw, we have a, well, we have 0% TDP in GPU-Z, so this is a, not a good sign, obviously. This, this means that the card is performance capped. So the way this card works, and a lot of um, GTX 10 series and even 20 series cards, is that they use a chip called um, INA3221. In this case, it's over here. I'll link it in the description. So the way it works, no, oh, whoops. So like I was saying, the way it works is that this chip is, is responsible for reporting the uh, power consumption consumption to the uh, GPU itself. And it does so through two resistors, 33 ohm resistors. So these two over here. So I can tell you right off the bat that um, I'm not getting any continuity between the bottom of these resistors and the INA3221 chip. So I'm not sure if there's like a dead resistor lying around in the circuit, or maybe there's something wrong with the pads themselves. But in either case, I'll have to figure it out, and in a moment you'll see exactly what I find. Okay, so something I want to point out, I'm not sure how obvious this will be on camera, but looking at this, I can I notice there's actually a bit of physical damage. So, we have a trace here on the bottom, this connects to the, um, I think it's the SDA pin of our INA3221. Anyways, I know that it's not, it's actually missing the pad, and I'm guessing it no longer has a connection to the trace. So I'm guessing what's happening is that our 33 ohm resistor is connected to this top pad, but not to this bottom pad. So I'm, I'm gonna have to um, cut away at this uh, trace and then wire it to the 33 ohm resistor, which I'll install in a moment, and probably do the same for this pad over here. Okay, so as you can see, I uh, rewired to uh well, two resistors to the traces. This is, uh, as you can see, my um, well, my micro soldering skills are not that pretty, but it does work. So unfortunately, after I rewired them, I tested the card and it didn't work. It still had zero zero watts for power consumption. So I went ahead and instead replaced the um, INA3221 chip over here. I'm not sure if you, you can kind of see the uh, flux residue around. So yep, I replaced the chip. So let's go ahead and boot into Windows and see if we finally have uh, something other than zero watt power consumption. Okay, so as you can see, the uh, card's running game. Just to confirm, code 43 is actually still gone. And to and then, uh, much better than this, we now actually have a power consumption. So as you can see, we have 12-volt uh, readings on all of our power connectors, as well as 100% uh, TDP here, and of course, normal voltage, and by extension, normal clocks and temperatures. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the card is uh, repaired. This was uh, kind of an interesting card. You know, I normally don't have to ever change the INA3221. That's usually a pretty reliable chip, but in this case, yeah, we had a dead INA3221 as well as those two, uh, well, a bunch of dead resistors on the back. So anyways, I hope you learned something, I hope you learned something watching this video, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.